dares are dangerous things. Um, so Anne got into trouble, broke her ankle because of a dare. And so a dare is you say, oh, I dare you to blah, 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 blah. And there's a lot of social pressure involved and often very little good comes of it. And it started with the boys and boys tend to be more rambunctious and more fighty and more, oh, I'm brave, I'm tough, and tend to do more stupid things, which is why women live longer. Um, but anyway, so after the boys started doing it, the girls started doing it. And Anne dared Josie to walk along a fence. So if the fence is, you know, waist high, that's about three feet, and you won't really hurt yourself badly falling off of it. Now, the ridge pole is the line at the center of the roof. So you figure the bottom of the roof is 10 feet up. Or maybe even, maybe only 8 feet, but 10 feet up. And then you have another 8, 10 feet of roof, because the roofs are pitched. Because uh, Prince Edward Island, they get snow, and in snowy areas, you need a pitched roof. And the ridge pole would be at the line right along the top. And so Anne grabbed a ladder, climbed up, started walking. Now, walking a balance beam... Um, isn't really difficult. I mean, you see the gymnasts and they're doing the flips and the whatever on the balance beams. And the balance beams are four inches wide. So, I mean, anyone who's reasonably dexterous can walk on a balance beam. Now, the ridge pole wouldn't necess would probably not be flat and probably angled just like the roof was. So, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit difficult. Plus, Anne probably didn't have good shoes for such things. Um, shoes were typically leather soles, which don't have much grip. She would have been better off if she had been barefoot, uh, because your toes can get good grip on things. So if Anne had been barefoot, then she probably would have done f better walking the ridge pole. But anyway, she slipped and she fell and she landed in the Virginia Creeper. Uh, which, of course, made a noise and Mrs. Berry came out. What's the noise? And, uh, and broken her ankle. And, you know, it's kind of cool that she got her fainting dead away. Oh. So, you know, she got her little bit of drama there. And this was something that made Marilla realize how much she loves and cares for Anne. Because, you know, she saw Anne being carried. And Anne was lying back with her head limp. And so it's like, oh, did Anne fall and die or did something terrible happen? And it's like, well, she fell and she broke her ankle, which is bad. But, you know, lots, lots worse things to happen. Um, I've never broken an ankle. My ankle twists. It's unpleasant. Um, I imagine a broken, broken ankle is far, far worse. Broken bones. Lolly just said she broke her butt and it hurts a lot. Lolly broke her butt a couple of times. Um, and the problem with the broken butt is you can't do anything. If you break an ankle, they set it straight and they put a cast on and it keeps it from moving. With a broken butt, you just like, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Take some Advil. And, um, or take some Tylenol because, you know, there's nothing you can do. You can't cast, can't put a cast on your butt. If we had tails... If we had actual proper tails, then maybe. But, uh, no. Anyway, there's nothing you can do for a broken butt. There's nothing you can do for a broken heart. Anyway. Dares are bad. Anne fell and hurt herself. Walking along the ridge pole. Not necessarily that difficult. Uh, walking along the fence is probably easier because if it's a rail fence, then the rails tend to be flattened and pretty and nice. Um... Plus, it's lower. The thing that probably got to Anne, actually, was her imagination. Because she's up here, and, you know, the logical, rational person. Like, if Marilla were up there, Marilla would just be, yep, it's this wide, this big, walk carefully. Angle one foot to the left, one foot to the right, curl the toes a little bit. Not a problem. 
But Anne was like, oh no, whatever shall I do? Oh, it's so far. If I look, I'll fall. Oh, look, I'm looking. Oh no, I'm falling. And this is one of the things I know I've gone on about because this is one of the things that just comes up. The way you look is the way your body goes. So if you look to the left, your body goes to the left. So Anne should have just been looking straight down or straight ahead, looking at her feet, heel on one side, toe on the other, feet pointed in different directions, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Get to the end, turn around, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Slowly back down to the ladder, Climb down the ladder. Victory! But no. She's like, okay. Walk, walk, walk. Oh, it's ever so high. Oh, I'll be so ashamed if I back out. I'm not a coward. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to fall off the edge over there. So, yeah. Anne's imagination probably hurt her here. Uh, it's hurt her a lot. And that was something interesting at the beginning of the chapter where it was, you know, it's been two weeks since she's been in trouble or it's been a full month since she's been in trouble. Not counting, you know, walking off the edge of the bridge. And so this was a little bridge over a creek. So all that happens is she falls three feet and gets wet and embarrassed and her dress gets dirty and her stockings get dirty and you know she looks silly and then the pouring the skim milk into the pig's butt or into the basket of yarn instead of the pig's bucket which is not good but it's not terrible it means the pig eats a little bit less uh it also means that the yarn has to be washed because um milk when it goes milk when it goes bad smells really bad so what you'd have to do is you'd have to take the yarn wash it kind of like unroll it get it soaked get it out wring it let it dry re-roll it and that's that's just painfully tedious but it's yeah it's not really a harmful thing the yarn will be okay for the washing because just about everything you make out of yarn gets washed at one time or another. And some things actually get washed in the process of making it. Um, berets. So you have the French berets, you know, the hats, the little flat things. And ho, ho, ho. Anyway. <laughs> little, little flat hats. Oh and when they're, <laughs> when they're made... <laughs> They're actually knit, and they're substantially larger, and they're made out of wool. And so they knit these larger hats. They're like this. And then they wash them in hot water. And what that does to the wool is it tightens it up, and all of those wool fibers tighten up. And this is a process called felting. So where the wool tightens up. And so you have this knit hat. But because all of the wool fabric tightens up, all the little holes knit in tighten up, because everything tightens up and closes up, it looks like a solid piece of fabric that was just sort of shaped that way. But it's actually knit, and then they soak it in hot water and it shrinks. And there's all sorts of running gags about clothes shrinking in hot water. And that's pretty much only wool. Cotton doesn't do it. Synthetics don't do it. Uh, wool, on the other hand, does do it. So, you know, losing the milk into the yard is, is kind of a pain, and it's extra work, but it's not that tragic. And these are the things that happened to Anne, and Marilla's right. Anne is very much an unlucky child. And also notice that she brought up Gilbert. And Okay, there's a jump just back. And the reason was because as I was going through it, I realized that I gave the wrong play. And I almost thought, well, you know, I could just put it in the comments and put it in the description and say, no, I was wrong. But I thought about it. It's like, you know, I better just re-record the end of the thing and say, okay, 
this is what I was going to say and say it correctly. Um, previously, I in the first version of this, I had said that he thinks the lady doth protest too much was from uh, Macbeth. It's actually from Hamlet, Queen Gertrude. And here's why I was going to say it. Anne mentions Gilbert. And she hates Gilbert, but she thinks a lot about him and she talks a lot about him. Which makes me think she doesn't really hate him, even though she swears she hates him with a fiery passion redder than her hair. But, you know, she thinks a lot about Gilbert. And, um, so this was the quote from Hamlet, Methinks the lady doth protest too much. And I originally thought it was Macbeth and Lady Macbeth saying it, but then once I did a quick check and I saw Methinks the lady doth protest too much, which is perfect for Queen Gertrude in Hamlet, because, uh, this was in one of those plays within a plays things where Queen Gertrude was watching a play where there was a queen who was swearing, swearing that she would love her king forever and then turns around and marries someone else, which is exactly what Queen Gertrude did. And she's like, he thinks the lady doth protest too much. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of the irony there. Which was what Hamlet was going for when he set up the play within the play within the play. Anyway, so Anne says, starts talking about Gilbert. And anytime she completely mentions it, it's like, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. And, you know, that's really a case of he thinks the lady doth protest too much. Which is a wonderful thing to say to shut people down. Because there's... A lot of people who just like lie and deny and deny and they deny something and you get tired of hearing their excuses and it's like I think you're protesting too much and you actually feel the other way we'll shut them up because they can't just go ahead and say no 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 without it coming out as yes 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 so they can't really say anything and that just quiets them down. It's like, okay, I'm tired of arguing about this. The other thing I was going to say is there's a phrase that's become popular recently, and it's living rent-free in someone's head. So it's often used in political situations where someone says, X is terrible. X is a horrible human being. X is absolutely and utterly wrong about whatever. The thing is, is that they're obsessing with this person. And you get this a lot with Donald Trump. And it's like, everybody hates Donald Trump. But the thing is, is that them hating them, him, means that he is living in their head. That they are giving all of this space over to Donald Trump that they could be using on, I don't know, makeup, knitting, paper airplanes, engineering, science poetry music anything but it's like i hate donald trump it's like congratulations you know you're helping him win um don't think about pink elephants yeah lolly says don't think about pink elephants uh that's another thing where it's like it gets stuck in your head and you can't really get it out but yeah it's think of other things and it's living rent free in someone's head um this happens a lot with racists and it's just, like, absurd that it happens so much with racists. And they're like, oh, black people are so... Or Jews or Muslims or white people or whatever. It's like, they are living in your head. You are... They should be paying you rent. But no, it's like you're giving this all of this space. And it's... Yeah living rent-free in people's heads. So um, we'll see what happens with Anne and Gilbert. Uh, and uh, don't hate. Hate is bad. Hate just tears at your soul. It burns you up. It destroys you. And uh, the other person doesn't necessarily feel anything. 
There was a horrible movie, horrible, horrible movie many years ago called Street Fighter, which was based on a video game. And a movie based on a video game is usually a bad sign. But it was Raul Julia's last film. And he played the villain. And Raul Julia was a great actor. And he chewed the scenery. And he was just incredible and impressive. Even though he was dying of cancer. And he gave this incredible performance in a crappy little movie. I mean, it's it was a crappy little movie. It wasn't very good. Um, but he gave this masterful performance because one he's a great actor and that's what he does and two he was doing it for his children his children love the game so he's like yes i will take this role in this crappy movie and i will be awesome in it now i'm bringing this up because he has one of the great lines where somebody one of the heroes gives this speech about how terrible he was how he killed her family and burned her village and he's like for you this was one of the most defining moments of your life for me it was tuesday and it's just like he lays it down and it's like yeah you don't matter to me and all of these people hating and hating and hating yeah it it was tuesday so don't hate don't do dares. Don't take dares. Don't make people do stupid things on dares. Um, and broke her ankle. I've seen people end up in the emergency room. Um, so no, don't do dares. Uh, don't hate. Um, yeah. <laughs>